I made these comments recently to an audience in Missouri, and a dietitian came up to me afterwards to tell me she's personally involved in the care of a 17-year-old who is status post triple coronary bypass. If this becomes routine, if it's just another day at the office, for an emergency physician to see and treat angina pectoris or myocardial infarction in a teenager or a young adult, we will have waited far too long to change our trajectory. This is where I think it's leading. Despite all the crap I learned in high school, or medical school for that matter, I can read the writing on the wall, and I hope you can too. Now, that adequately char characterizes the danger and the crisis, but it leaves a question unanswered, and that is, why? After all, obesity is about calories in versus calories out. Fundamentally, this relates to eating, physical activity, choices we make, behaviors we control. Why would a putatively intelligent species do this to itself? Why are we, in essence, eating ourselves to death and allowing our children to do the same? This is a brief audience participation moment. I'd love to hear you call out a few ideas. Raise your hand. I'll point in your general direction and let me know what you think. Why are we doing this? Don't give the punchline. Yes. Tastes good, okay. Pleasure. Hunger. High fructose corn syrup. Very interesting story there, okay. Advertising and marketing. Absolutely. It's interesting, by the way. Have you paused to consider that you would probably eat even if you didn't see a commercial admonishing you to do so? What's up with that? We'll return to that issue. Very important. Other thoughts? Yes. Entitlement. We're entitled to eat. Okay. Comfort, absolutely. <laughs> People are inherently lazy. I, I, I'll return to that issue. It may be true to some extent, but uh, I'm going to avoid character assassination. Yes. It's available, absolutely, more than ever before in history. All-you-can-eat buffet. I'm going to return to that, too. Critical point. Stress, absolutely. Yes. Okay, so comfort, emotional hunger, other forms of hunger. Good answers. I actually got my own punchline from the front row and tried to suppress it quickly. These are good, but permit me to summarize. We overeat and underdo ourselves to death for the very simple reason. Because we can. Throughout the history of Homo sapiens, and for that matter, every omnivorous species on the planet, it has always made sense to eat palatable, non-toxic food when it was available. There is no premium in nature on resisting available food. I submit to you that as a species, we have no native defenses against caloric excess. We never needed them before. I submit that we have no native defenses against the lore of the couch either. Animals in nature run after stuff they want to eat and away from stuff that wants to eat them. That's about it. There isn't much other running. In fact, you go to the zoo, it's very disappointing, right? Unless they're babies, the animals are just lying around waiting to be fed or pacing because they're psychotic, which is very sad. There is no premium in nature on seeking physical exertion either. It is normal to eat when you can. It is normal to be sedentary when you can. What is not normal is to be able to eat constantly and to be sedentary all the time. We have no native defenses against the challenges we face because throughout human history, we faced very different challenges. In fact, there was no need to think in terms of exercise. It used to go by a different name, work or survival. It did not require an elliptical cross trainer or specialized footwear. It now does. In essence, as we explain our plight, we can say that this plus this equals this. In much the same way that this plus this equals this. And we return to my friend, the polar bear beneath the Sahara sun. Polar bears are marvels of survival, beautifully adapted to one of the Earth's harshest climates. They have an array of adaptations conducive to soaking up and retaining heat. Polar bears have a double-layered coat. The inner layer is insulating and prevents dissipation of heat out from the body of the bear. The outer layer is comprised of hollow hairs that act as conduits, directing solar radiation to the skin. The skin of the polar bear is black to best absorb all wavelengths of light, 
And despite their very large size, they're quite aerodynamic in design, minimizing surface area again to minimize the dissipation of heat. Very conducive to survival to soak up and retain heat in the place where heat is scarce. But transport these marvels of survival to the burning sands of the Sahara in summer. And everything that fostered their survival before would now threaten their demise. If you soak up and retain heat, when heat is abundant, you overheat. There is no button to push on a polar bear should the environment change radically, which unfortunately, by the way, is happening, that says, it's no longer good to act like a polar bear. I'd like to be a lizard, thank you very much. You are caught unprepared and unawares as the environment changes around you. So the case I want to make is that people, families, adults, children, overeating, underdoing and overeating in this modern environment are more alike than they may seem to polar bears overheating beneath the Sahara sun. We are at odds with the environment around us. But I would like to point out, I lied to you a little bit ago when I said we have no native defenses against caloric excess of the lore of the couch. We have one that I can think of, great big homo sapien brains. We are smarter than the average bear. We potentially can outthink this challenge.